Hello, my name is Daniel Green. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. And my first talk is about sequential uh, use of uh, the implant-mediated guided growth in children. Um, it's, a, it's a big honor to be in this uh, course as we review the history of growth plate manipulation. It has been done a few times here in the course. Uh, we all recognize the leadership of uh, Dr. Stevens in uh, bringing uh, these techniques uh, uh, to the forefront. And we also, I think, need to pause and realize the importance of, of this course. It's one of the first three-day courses on the physis, perhaps, in the world. Um, there's a lot of different names we can call um, this type of growth plate surgery to uh, correct angular deformity. And through the course, you've probably heard many, many, many terms. Uh, this list can continue. My favorite terms are guided growth, growth modulation, or uh, implant-mediated guided growth. And that's uh, what I prefer to call it. So what's the most common cause of failure uh, when the surgeon uses implant-mediated guided growth? It's really putting these plates on too late in development when there's not enough growth remaining. So it's not enough correction, and the primary cause of not enough correction is putting these plates on uh, when the child's too old. So the basic principle is we have to have at least two years of growth remaining, and even if you have two years of growth remaining, in many cases that's not enough. Um, in addition, as, as you've seen throughout the course, there's some nice software available um, from uh, Dr. Hertzenberg's uh, uh, clinic and others. Um, and these are really based on the old Green Anderson and uh, work also work, the work on Bowen and McEwen, who have uh, provided some nice charts that, to help uh, predict uh, the timing of your uh, hemiephysidesis. I think it's important, especially as you get to the older children, to really uh, use a um, radiographic indicator of growth. We like to use the um, hand for bone age, and we've published an abbrevi abbreviated version of the old uh, uh, growth, I can't even say it, growth pile. <laughs> um, Atlas, and that's been published in JPO. And basically in girls, uh, if you can all remember, the thumb sesamoid shows up at 11, and in boys, 13. And uh, this is a nice short, um, shorthand method to determine bone age. Um, here again is an example in females. You can see the, the thumb, thumb sesamoid at age 11, and uh, that's one of the, one of the key um, indicators when using the hand for bone age. I just reviewed our last uh, uh, our data for the past 10 years and looking at 137 plates, which is basically equally distributed between hinge plates, peanut plates, and ape plates. And as many other studies have shown, uh, when the kids are younger, males yet younger than uh, 13 and a half, they have a 40% higher rate of correction per year than the older males. And females less than 13 have a 25% higher correction rate than the older females. One principle that I think we can all take away from this conference here is to get a better feel for what's the lowest age that is safe to place uh, implant-mediated guided growth. In the Blount area, the lowest age in most of the studies was, was age 8 or 9. And surgeons at the time were afraid of growth plate damage and premature closure, especially when the staples were applied and they were, a little more, they were obviously more difficult to remove than the devices we have today. But as you can see from this nice review from uh, Dr. Eastwood, um, reviewing uh, six of the six of the um, last studies, which reviewed the eight plate, you can see that um, the range is is quite quite low. Dr. Stevens had uh, 34 patients with the lowest age reported in his uh, publication of 1.7. Uh, other papers are 4.9, 5.2, uh, 4, and seven years of age. So really, as the uh, literature's developed, the lowest age to place these growth plates are lowering, lower and lower. And in the breakout session yesterday, we saw Dr. Sepulveda had a case of a one-year-old that she uh, successfully used implant media guided growth for. So how long could these implants be left in prior to removal in the young child without damaging the growth plate? Um, I just to uh, Bring this point to discussion, I'd like to show a case that presented to me a 14-year-old who two years, who was two years after 
arthroscopic treatment for a tibial spine fracture at an outside institution and you can see that the screw was long across the growth plate and the child developed a valgus deformity due to tethering on the lateral side of the proximal tibia. We have an MRI with the screw in and there was no overt uh, growth arrest. Um, you can see some the Harris growth arrest line um, you can see here in the top coronal MRI image is showing asymmetry and signs of asymmetric growth. So in this 14-year-old child with growth remaining and open growth plates, we elected to arthroscopically remove the tibial spine screw, and then we placed a, uh, a tension plate on the medial side of the knee. And two years later, we had a nice correction of the deformity. And this just highlights that there's in this one particular case here, this child had two years of growth modulation, albeit uh, accidentally on the lateral side of the knee, and then was corrected with two years of growth modulation on the, on the inside of the knee, and there was no um, obvious growth disturbance as a result of this four years of treatment. So again, how long can we leave these implants in safely? Well, if you, if you go back to our literature, really the first reference to it was in Dr. Blount's article in JBGS in 1949, where uh, he, no, he noted that, quote, we do not know how long one may safely leave staples in situ in without the, with the assurance of growth after removal. And he quotes uh, reference 10, Dr. Feminster suggested that the interval be limited to two years. So when I, in preparation for this talk, I was all excited to read reference 10. And that was personal communication by Dr. Blount with Dr. Feminster. <laughs> So are there exceptions to this two-year rule? There, there are, clearly there are. It's safe. To, I think it's safe to use these plates more than two years, especially in the older child uh, when they're approaching the sensation of growth anyway, and we're not worried about uh, premature growth arrest. It's obviously, I think, also okay to use this about the knee in if there's incomplete correction of the deformity more than two years if the plate is on the longer leg. Again, we're not worried about premature growth arrest. What about sequential growth plate surgery? This is becoming increasingly popular in institutions ar around the world. And if you have incomplete, in very young children, if you have incomplete correction after two years, you can then take the plates off or remove the metaphyseal screw, especially if the epiphyseal screw is, uh, and the plate position is perfect. After allowing one or two years of growth, without tethering of an implant, and you're, you're confident that there's no evidence of physeal uh, bar, then you can either replace the implant or just replace the metaphyseal screw. And this is a case from Dr. Sepulveda, where she recently, uh, where she had a case where she removed the metaphyseal uh, screw when she was using um, these uh, guided, guided growth techniques for leg length discrepancy. So again, we have, we have more questions and answers. Can the two-year world be broken? We've talked about a few cases. I think it can be influenced by the health of the physis or more specifically the diagnosis. I don't think we can lump all these patients together where they have skeletal dysplasia, rickets, iatrogenic cases. Um, well, in the future, we might um, feel that perhaps the two-year rule can be broken with different type of implants. Um, also, the anatomic growth plate might be important. Do we treat, can this two year rule be broken? It might be different at the distal femur, proximal tibia, or distal tibia. Even the type of deformity, varus or valgus, may have its own set of rules in the future. And as we talked about before, I think it's definitely okay to keep the plates in for the older children, as long as you're following carefully and thinking about leg length issues. So in conclusion, this is 2014, but it's more like 1949, because as Dr. Blount said, is it, it is possible that a longer interval is safe in most cases and further studies will be made with reference to this important point. So, thank you.